Right. Uh, welcome back to the last session of the day. Uh, any questions we have up to now? If not, um, we will talk about uh, how to generate output based on multiple program stages. All good? Any feedback should be fine. You can also use this reactions button in, uh, in Zoom. Thumbs up is there. Any reactions? Uh, I'm a bit worried because everyone is silent. Uh, did you all understand everything or you are having issues? All good? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, great. Fine. So now let me quickly brief what we have done so far. So uh, we have introduced you what we mean uh, by the DHIS2 event reports. It's an application where you can uh, get an output of um, uh, the tracker data and produce a, a tabular visualization. And I also mentioned that most of the criteria related to configuring the dimensions for analysis remains the same um, as what we have for pivot table. It's just that you have to be really mindful when you are using this table style and output type. So uh, table style pivot um, is used when you want to produce an aggregate output and line list when you get, want to get a kind of list out all the track entity instance related data. Right? And then we have two output types, which are events and enrollments. Events is like when we are only concerned about individual events which are like, uh, say, if you have a program stage, still we, we are only worried about how many events took place. That's the type of uh, situation when we are using event, out, uh, event type uh, output. Whereas enrollment, we are using when we are more concerned about the enrollment, individual enrollment, and we don't want same event to be counted multiple times. Right? Okay, so we have discussed various types of outputs that we can produce. But one last thing we want to show in event report is how to produce an output based on information that we gather across multiple program stages. Okay, right. Again, one major limitation, we can currently only provide these kind of outputs for line list, right? Not for events, okay? Sorry, not for pivot only for line list. Say for example, if you want to produce an output which includes data elements from multiple program stages, we can only do that for line list at the moment and you can't produce pivot or aggregate output comparing data elements from different program stages. These only within the pivot, uh, in, within the event report application. Because if you want to produce some kind of, a, uh, say, aggregate output, like total number of patients uh, who, had, uh, uh, who had a PCR sample and the PCR came as positive, right? That kind of uh, single value output, if you want to put it in your, in your dashboard, still there is another way of doing that. That is through using program indicators, right? That's the only way you can... Um, Produce that kind of output using a program indicator. But in the within the pivot, uh, within the event report application, you can only produce a visualization across multiple program stages by using uh, the line list, not using pivot table. Is that clear? Right. Just, uh, there is one question when I try to generate the event report in DHS2, it's stuck at the loading screen after I choose the relevant data and click update button. Also, I tried with VPN, but it is still happening. Yeah. So there are multiple reasons why this can happen. If, uh, if your DHIS2 visualization keeps on loading, multiple reasons. Uh, let's start with more local things, right? Local means like issues that can be from your end. So one is that 
probably your internet connection is too slow, right? That's one. And number two can be, you may be having local browser cache of a previous DHIS2 output, right? So uh, like probably you must be familiar with this caching because DHIS2 uses something called a temporary memory, right? So previous outputs you, you might be storing in your browser. So, so to overcome that, you can do, you can use this, uh, you can use something called browser cache clean application, this one, right? And then you can, you just have to select all and then click on clear all selected items, right? That's what you can do. That's one, one reason. So it could be your internet, it could be your browser cache. These are the two common reasons that you are in. From uh, DHS2 side, it could, uh, it could be that uh, the output that you are trying to uh, generate could be too big and it requires so much of processing power. So probably your uh, DHS2 server is keeping on processing your output. That's one possibility. And the other possibility is that your DHS2 server may not have sufficient resources to cater too many requests. So too many requests could be like simultaneously if you have like multiple people logged in, probably like the scenario that we are doing now, but it's quite unlikely like uh, because most of these outputs that we tried to generate was kind of uh, very, you know, like lightweight outputs, but that could also be a reason. So these are the four issues I can think of. Uh, so probably if you can clear the browser cache, that might work because it happened to me once, uh, even today. And, uh, I, and also you can even try to refresh your uh, browser, right? Okay. Yes, going back to the visualization. So uh, I hope it is clear what we, are, what we are trying to do. We are going, we can only use in the event report application, generate output, which is a line list type. Okay, right, so. Let me open a uh, visualization. So let's click on favorite, open, and uh, COVID case based surveillance enrollment summary. This is the one. Okay. I click and open, and this is what I get. So let's focus on the left side. Here we see it's line list and the output type enrollment. So that means you are only counted once, right? That's number one. And what's the next thing? Whenever we mention enrollment, okay, uh, open question for all of you. Whenever we mention line list and enrollment, one thing is a, a single enrollment or a track entity instance who, are, who is having an enrollment is only counted once. And number two, what will happen if you have a repeatable stage? Anybody? If you have a repeatable stage, what will be the impact? It will give the last last one, last element. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So it's the last uh, event that is taken into consideration of that uh, repeatable stage. Good. Right. So let's focus what we have in this output. So we have the registration date, the symptom state, and then we have the org unit. And next we have a uh, few uh, tracked entity attributes, first name, surname, and uh, sex. And then we have signs and symptoms present or not coming from uh, uh, and, and the underlying condition coming from one stage. And then a type of test, which is coming from the second stage, right? The request uh, stage. And then the lab result, which is coming from the third stage. And the health outcome, which is coming from the fourth stage. Okay. So here we have produced a line list pulling up uh, data which are across program stages. So this is really nice in case when you want to provide a kind of a... Uh, ...person's health record, which can span across multiple stages. So this is a really valuable feature and something that you might uh, encounter as really handy when you are when you want to especially provide uh, uh, Excel-based output, like an uh, an or else uh, if you want to export data out of DHS2, this can come in handy. Only limitation is when you have a repeatable program stage, it'll it'll count or it'll take into consideration the value of the latest event. Any questions? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right. So, yeah. Right. So uh, let's see how we can design this table. So again, I'm going to click on new, right? And then from this side, I will select the pivot table, not pivot table, it has to be line list. And then the output type has to be not events, it has to be enrollment. And the data, I will select COVID-19 case-based surveillance. And next, um, I can select the first stage. I will just select the attributes and the attributes is going to be, we will take the first name, surname and sex. And then from stage one, we will get the data elements, underlying condition, double click, and then signs and symptoms present or not. Right. This is from first stage. And from stage three, we will get type of test and the lab result. And stage four, we will obtain the data element health outcome, right? So we have now selected all the attributes and data elements which are required to produce this table, okay? Right. And we'll go all the way up and select the Lao PDR, which is the country, that's it. And I click on update. Twenty-five thousand one hundred sixteen cases, span, spanning across two hundred fifty-two pages in this output. Right. So this is kind of a output that you can produce in DHIS two event reports, which spans across a couple of program stages. But here, another question: Like, do you see um uh, like one important information that is missing when we are producing um? this kind of information. Right here, and date of uh, onset of symptoms. What else? Okay. Uh, like you will definitely encounter this issue when you when you are using this in practical scenario and like when when your health department is requesting a crucial information and you are not able to produce it. So one thing which is missing here in this table is you cannot obtain the individual event date by default. Right? There are there are like other ways of obtaining it through the API and all, but here you cannot. Right? This is one major issue because sometimes. Because we are looking at, even though we are getting a snapshot, like or as a one a person's health record, the events that he has undergone in the, across these stages may not have happened on the same day. Okay, so probably like uh, uh, his uh, PCR test was done on one day and result was available on another day, and the outcome was obtained again on a, I mean, like maybe two three days after. Right, but that is not rep uh, represented in this table. So that's again one limitation uh, and something that you have to keep in mind because uh, if someone asks for that information, you actually cannot produce it in this step. But uh, these are a few areas that uh, that will be improved in time to come. So I guess that's it. So what I will do next, uh, okay, first of all, are there any questions? Is everything so clear? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm happy if, if, if uh, things are really clear, but uh, if there are any questions, 
please ask now or else you can always ask in Slack or chat. If there are no questions, what we will do is like, uh, I, will, I will quickly do a brief recap, it's just one slide presentation. And then you can do the exercise number four. And then I will uh, uh, open today's assignments uh, for you. It's a graded assignment, which has, I think, uh, five uh, multiple choice type questions that you will have to answer. Um, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's not difficult at all. You just have to perform some activities and uh, answer the questions based on the output. Okay, so let me share my last slide. Right, so a uh, quick recap of what we did today. So we discussed about DHIS2 event reports. So DHIS2 event reports is a very useful application when you are using uh, the DHIS2 tracker, because uh, especially like this, this, this becomes really handy uh, for the operational level, right? I'm not saying like this is not useful for the, uh, the country level or the provincial level, but for health facility level, and probably at district level, this can come in really handy because that's where they are uh, worried too much about individual patients. So here we have two table styles in event reports. First is the pivot type, which allows you to create aggregate tables based on tracker or event data. And then you have line lists, which allows you to create line lists based on tracker or event data. And here we have two output types. We have event type output and the enrollment type output. Event type output shows data from all events within a single program stage, um, which includes repeated, uh, repeated events. And the enrollment shows data from the most recent event and can combine data across all program stages. And we can only show data from multiple stages using a combination of line list table and an enrollment output type inside event reports application. In addition, here also you can configure data based on the three dimensions, what, when, and where, um, which is very similar to what you already know about pivot table. It's just that in the data dimension, you have to do some additional configuration. You can also filter data when you are configuring data items in, uh, under the data dimension. And in addition, you can also save the outputs as favorites, and you can download um, these outputs as uh, Excel or CSV. Right, so that's it. What we have for today, are there any questions? Word of the day I have already mentioned in case you missed it, it uh, it's Blackbird. Right, so let me quickly open uh, today's attendance. Sorry, not today's attendance, today's uh, graded uh, assignments. So please, few, few, few notices. Uh, please give us feedback because we, we take them really seriously and we go through the feedback every day to improve better. So please give us feedback uh, for today's um, uh, courses uh, that we did. And then of course, mark the attendance. Let me check whether feedback is open. Yeah, it's open for day three. The graded assignment for you uh, shortly. Right, the graded assignment should be visible now. So uh, please give us uh, uh, feedback for day three um, before you leave. Yeah, there's one question from Amit, difference between program indicator and program attributes and between program, sorry. Did I? Sorry. Um, Difference between program indicator and program attributes and between program attributes and data elements. Okay, good question.
program indicators is something new which we have not discussed today we will be discussing about it tomorrow but like because you asked asked about uh, asked this question okay first thing attributes track entity attributes are uh, are kind of semi permanent or properties of the track entity instance right so for example the first name surname gender uh, date of birth right so these are kind of or as even the telephone number in most countries if it is not something that you change frequently these are considered as something else there is something called track entity attributes and program attributes so the difference is track entity attributes are something which are kind of uh, i mean like very unique or something permanent or semi permanent to that person but in addition there may be again few properties related to the person which are, which are somewhat uh, unique to that program right so for example say tb id is something unique but like it's not something that person has to carry along with him every time he goes across all the health programs right it's mostly unique and mostly a an attribute which is relevant to that program so So I hope you are you are you have you, it's now clear about what we mean by attributes. Data elements are variables or fields that we are collecting in a tracker program. So these are not uh, kind of semi permanent or, or properties of a person. Right? These keep keeps on changing. So like for example, data element could be a, a laboratory test result, laboratory sample type. Right? This keeps on changing, and it's I mean this is like when the track entity instance or the person undergoes his journey across the health program uh, on different different days he has events and in that events we collect data and this data we we uh, store in data elements right so that's the kind of difference between attributes and data elements so attributes are kind of properties uh, these are permanent or semi permanent data related to a person whereas data elements uh, collect data about values which can always change and program indicator so you must be familiar with what we what we refer to as indicators in in aggregate right so indicator is always we do a calculation so program indicator you can simply think of a concept where we do some calculations based on properties of tracker data right so for example if we want to select uh, 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 say like this data element and say we want to calculate uh, i'm i'm starting the sentence as calculate right so that's the unique thing about uh, uh, program indicator it's always about calculations so if you want to calculate uh, uh, a property say like females right uh, and a data element who has received the first dose of covid vaccine right um uh, in in some areas so say for example if i want to calculate the females total females who have received first dose of covid 19 in in lao right for this we configure a program indicator right so that's a calculation so what we actually have to do is like with that program indicator using the pivot table we can generate output okay so this uh, because you asked the question i mentioned but this we will be discussing in detail tomorrow so don't get too much confused uh, if you don't understand what a program indicator is but i hope you understood the basic differences okay uh the word of the day yeah of course the word of the day i uh we have mentioned already is blackbird let me type it again here any other questions okay that's it so please uh, give us feedback please mark the attendance and please do the graded assignments for the day 3 if you have forgotten to give us feedback or mark the attendance previous days please do that so that's it for the day we will stay online in the slack if you have any queries um, if you don't have any questions so see you tomorrow at the same time tomorrow uh, yeah same time that's 12 noon indian standard time have a great day bye bye